You're watching Telecom TV from the Smart IoT London event in Excel. And I'm joined now by Professor Misha Dola, who is the Director of the Centre of Telecommunications Research at King's College London. Misha, good to see you at last. You are an expert in 5G. You've been in the wireless scene for a lot of years now. Um, I'd like to ask you, why as an industry are we talking about 5G now when all predictions are we won't see standards uh, commercial networks until 2020 plus? Mm -hmm. Good question. So, you know, we always need a long lead time to, to get the system up and running. Now, cellular is probably the only industry which really needs 10 years uh, to get from one generation to the next generation. We've tried to shorten that, uh, not really successfully. So if you look at the uh, cycles, 2G to 3G, 3G to 4G, and what I predict, 4G to 5G, same thing, will be about 10 years. And the reason is, is how the entire standards body is constructed. It's a very complex system. Um, it works really well globally. So that's really kudos to the community. But you need to get everybody around the table. They need to agree on every single thing from antenna, modulation, security, uh, mobility, authentication, billing. You have the entire ecosystem there. So, you know, sometimes two people can't agree for months. Now, imagine like tens of thousands of people and companies. Uh, that's why it takes such a long time. And we want to start now because we have just finished with 4G. 4G is up and running. It's a good moment to get this going. Now, in your keynote here at the uh, event today, you mentioned that we need to start seeing some new tech thinking. So does this mean we're going to see an end of, say, cellular architecture as we know it? So my dream, my dream is really to get rid of this notion of generations, okay? That's really my dream. So the answer to your question is yes. Uh, we need to totally fundamentally rethink that. Um, I give you the example of the internet. You don't see Cisco, Facebook, and, uh, and you know, uh, Microsoft sit together every 10 years to come up with a new internet standard. We are the only community who does that. Um, so if we could break it up a little bit, allow everybody, what I call these Pandora worlds, to innovate in them, we would accelerate innovation so much quicker. And you would have download rates of terabits per second instead of uh, megabits per second today. Now, this is the Smart IoT London event. So what will 5G mean for IoT and what will it mean for, for the smart city idea? So 5G and IoT, it's really curious, like, you know, 2016, they appear on the same slide sets, and I'm very excited about this. And I've been part of the IoT movement now for 15 years, and we really started in a totally different setting. Uh, we did a lot of mistakes, and it turns out that cellular is probably the right answer for Internet of Things really to take off. Because with all the other technologies, we struggled with coverage, with reliability, um, with liability. So there's a legal aspect there just simply for the spectrum you're using. Um, scalability. So now 3G has been rolled out, 4G, and it turns out that, hey, actually, we could tune that system such that it consumes very little energy. I could put that modem in there and connect billions of sensors to, to my cellular infrastructure. Now, you just mentioned the, uh, the consumption of energy. And again, it, early on today, you were talking about energy versus power. This is something we often get confused um, to our cost. Yes, so we did huge mistakes with that very simple mis mistake, essentially. So the, uh, the notion of power and energy, they're clearly very related, very different. So energy drains a battery. That makes you recharge your phone. Power gives you range. Okay, and that determines the density of the base stations. So we designed that Zig Zigbee system, which would connect our millions of sensors, and uh, we went for a low power system, low power, low range. Uh, since we couldn't put too many base stations, we had to make multi-hop. Multi-hop requires mesh networking, ad hoc networking. Sounds a great idea. Reality doesn't work, right? So what you want is a star topology like cellular. So now suddenly we need a system which transmits at very high power. Can you do high power and low energy? Yes, remember your physics days, right? So you have power versus time, uh, your, your radio's on, power's consumed, and that's switched off. And the area under the curve is your energy. So if you want to have a high power system at very low energy, you need to transmit very quickly at very high rate. And that's what we can do with cellular. So these technological advances we're, we're seeing, um, it's going to translate at some point into new business models. 
So what, what might we see that's different on the business side with 5G? Yeah, so everything is shaking now. So we had, you know, the, 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 the uh, value chain was really carved out so well until 4G. There was the consumer, there was the mobile operator, which was trying to get as many consumers as possible. Then came the vendors, and the vendors were essentially vying to get the operator contracts, and the operators had a lot of leverage over the vendors, over the Nokias, Huawei, Ericsson's, etc., uh, and then came all the supply chain. Right now, 5G will change that simply because the end customer is not necessarily you and me anymore. There's a very strong B2B story here, business to business story. So these are industries. That's an oil and gas company. That's Volvo. Uh, that's Skanska, construction companies. Right, C companies you've never heard of, but are really big giants. They want to connect all their stuff, Internet of Things, really in the construction world, oil and gas world, etc. Now suddenly the operators don't have any more of these bridges. They're not actually prepared to talk to the, uh, the Skanskas and to the Schlumbergis, right? Uh, whilst the vendors, the second tier in the value chain before, they speak B2B. Okay, so it's not no surprise that Hans Vestberg, uh, CEO of Ericsson, strikes a deal with Volvo, um, and they make sure that that equipment goes into every single Volvo car and truck uh, for the next ten years. And suddenly, it is Ericsson which has a lot of leverage over the operators because they can say, "Hey, which operator has the best contract for me, so I can service essentially Volvo?" So suddenly, we end up with a reverse value chain where the uh, operators will still be serving in first line the consumers but suddenly we'll be in the second line with the, in the b2b world and that intertwinkling will give that ecosystem a lot of stability and i'm very excited about this do operators still have a role in a 5G future? Yes, absolutely, a big role, right? So they own the spectrum in the end of the day, so you can't get, you can't get in a sense, rid of them. Um, they, do, they do also have a huge role in the consumer space, and of course, also in the B2B space, one of the operators will win these contracts. And of course, at some point, co operators themselves will wake up and start strike contracts with the Schlumbergis, etc. But uh, currently, how the business operations are structured, I feel the vendors are much much more prepared for that. And I pr predicted that five years ago, and it's just playing out exactly that way. A final question for you, because I'd like to talk for, for you know for hours about this this subject, because there's, there's, there's so much, it's mm. such an important topic. But um, with the, the standardization work, um, we've got goals, and we've, we've got vendors really getting excited to try and push out their equipment before yeah. the standards actually you know, get solidified. Um, is the technology ready? Have we done all the R&D work necessary? Can, can we achieve the vision? I think we can, and I, I, I love the way things go now. So pressure is very high in the industry. So you saw the Mobile World Congress, Ericsson uh, brought that equip, piece of equipment at, at n like normal size, which were, gave us, what, 25 gigabits per second? Wow, that's massive. And you build all the building handover capabilities behind that. Now we are really on the crossroad here. So it doesn't take any more like 10 years to come up with the next standard. Just fire it out. It's a bit like Qualcomm and 3G, right? They just put the working CDMA chip on the table so everybody adopted it because they've seen it works so I love that because it's much quicker it's much more allow how innovation should work there should be a lot of more competition between the vendors and clearly you have realized we're not using any more the more traditional bands we're richly using you know higher frequency bands and that's the way to go really and if you look at the capacity increase over the last 30 40 years it's about a million fold probably now a bit more. And if you zoom in, what gave you the biggest contribution, it's actually the smaller cell sizes, right? The next biggest contribution, the factor 1,600 is smaller cells. Uh, the next contribution is spectrum, factor 25. And the physical layer and all that rest is just a factor 1.6, whatever. So, you know, we, we could have, I'm, I'm really exaggerating now, but we could have gone away with the 1912 on and off key modulation scheme and put all our money uh, into making smaller cells and, and opening up the spectrum. We would have had more capacity, right? So, therefore, moving 5G into the higher frequencies and widening the spectrum and building more access points, that's the right strategy to go. Well, this story is only starting, but for now, Misha, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.